I've always wanted to build a uh, kind of a high-end receiver and one of my favorite receivers has been the Drake 2B with its companion Q multiplier, the 2BQ. So when I set out to design a transceiver, uh, a receiver, it was to be modeled after the, the Drake 2B, only use uh, technology out of the 1980s. I came across this beautiful Eddystone 898 dial made in uh, the United Kingdom. And once I had that, that kind of set the form factor for the receiver. Some may recognize the, the basic shape here as being that of the Heathkit SB303. I came across a, a Junker 303, ended up using the side panels and the rear panel, and making my own front panel and chassis and sub-chassis for this receiver. A lot of the features are very, very similar to the Drake. Of course, power on, off. Here I have a slow AGC, no AGC, or fast AGC, and I chose those time constants to pretty much match what was designed into the Drake 2B. Now a little bit different than the, the Drake 2B, I have IF gain, and I should backtrack a, a bit. I searched quite a while for a, a design I'd be comfortable with, and I came across Wes Hayward's progressive receiver, which was initially featured in a series of articles in QST. Wes's call is W7ZOI, and his progressive receiver could start out as an 80 meter receive only, and then you could add modules to it for different bands and different features. So to Wes's basic uh, design, I think uh, IF game was one thing I added. I'm not sure that was in his design, but it, it may have been. It's been a number of years now. I added an audio notch filter, and instead of having the uh, 50 kilohertz LC selectivity as in the Drake 2B, I added homebrew crystal filters. I like to listen to AM, and so my widest filter is a four pole, five kilohertz filter. Then for sideband, a two and a half kilohertz filter, and for CW, a 500 hertz filter. I also added a mode switch over here for CW. It really centers the filter in the pass band properly for different modes. AM, upper sideband, lower sideband, and CW. That sort of takes the place a, a bit of the pass band tuning in the Drake. Similar to the Drake, I have a pre-selector. It's a vernier-driven pre-selector, and you just drive it for maximum noise. It's pretty much calibrated in kilohertz from 0 to 500, which matches each scale on here. This is the on-off switch for the audio notch filter, and I also added a tone control which is particularly nice for listening to the AM stations. So this really is an 80 meter single conversion receiver that I've added converters to, crystal control converters that Wes had designed for 40 meters, uh, 160 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. And it also turns out that by selecting the opposite side of the mixer instead of adding the instead of subtracting the oscillator from the VFO I can add the two together and get the 49 meter short wave band and it also tunes in the correct direction so we have 160 through 10 meters plus the 49 meter uh, short wave band we've already talked a little bit about the uh, VFO now we've got a, uh, a photo up of the top side of the receiver, and you can see clearly labeled in the middle uh, in that shielded can uh, is the VFO. And you can see the flexible coupling I used off the front of it to tie it to the main tuning. So that makes it even mechanically more stable. There's no microphonics. You can pick the front end of the radio up and drop it, and, and nothing changes. Um, starting in the, the left front is the, the second mixer. I mentioned previously that this is really an 80-meter receiver with crystal controlled converters. The first mixer sits right behind the VFO and these are, you can probably identify the mini circuits passive mixers in there, but there's a 2N5109 also and so these mixers have gain. Uh, just to the left of the VFO is a large board and that's the AGC board and uh, tacked on top of that are my three homebrew four pole crystal filters and I use separate relays on the input-output to reduce any blow-by of the filters. It's a double-sided board made in-house, 
and uh, the top is pretty much um, all ground plane. You notice in there are uh, a lot of SMA connectors. Right behind the AGC uh, IF board is the uh, one uh, set of SMA connectors. There's two more boards identical to that on the bottom, and that does uh, just a lot of housekeeping as far as selecting the right front end passive LC filters, uh, kicking in the correct uh, local oscillator, and other signal routing. To the right of the uh, first mixer, the other shielded can you can see clearly labeled is the BFO. Now I think in Wes's design this was, uh, I'm not sure they allowed for shifting it. Sometimes you might do that through a crude form of, of pass band tuning. But on this one I chose to um, warp some 9 megahertz crystals so that the crystal filters would be placed in the proper portion of the uh, pass band depending upon whether you're on AM where it's centered, uh, upper side band, lower side band, or CW. And that just makes uh, running the radio a, a lot, lot easier. In front of the BFO and to the right of the VFO are some other homebrew boards and uh, on those boards um, is the S meter detector and amplifier which was another addition I made and also um, up front we have the audio notch filter. The vertical board to the right of those two boards is the, uh, the AF preamp and product detector board. All along the back side, uh, on the rear left, the rear itself, and the rear right are different crystal controlled converters for the different bands. Let me tune up to the sideband portion of 40. The Eddystone dial has a nice flywheel in the back. You can hear the interference go away as I narrow the filter. Matter of fact, I'm going to set up some appointments and talk to some people in the hospitals and the medical field. The lighting on here is uh, kind of a throwback to the Drake 4 line. It uses a uh, an acrylic light pipe I made where I insert blue LEDs into both ends and it shines a curtain of light down over the front panel. This receiver is a lot of fun to build. I spent a lot of time linearizing the VFO and also stabilizing the VFO. It uh, drifts maybe 20 or 30 hertz in the first five minutes and then is just absolutely rock stable. Okay, this is a photo of the bottom of the receiver. On the far right you can clearly see that nice uh, flywheel on the Eddystone dial. The, uh, the three boards that pretty much dominate the center of the receiver are really stacked boards. Each one of those contains uh, two front end filters. So we have uh, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10, and, uh, and 160 on those boards. The 49 meter band makes use of the 40 meter filter. You'll also see in the lower left the regulated power supply and uh, two of the SMA relay boards I mentioned that uh, just take, take care of general housekeeping. In the uh, upper right you'll see a board that looks identical to the first and second mixer boards on top. There is no mixer on here but I retained the 2N5109 amplifier stage and that's because when you're running 40 meters and up you've got the extra mixer in there and uh, that mixer has gain. So in order to keep the overall system gain the same I incorporated that board with its uh, 9 or 10 dB of gain and that is switched in only when you're on the 80 meter band. The little narrow board in front of that is the uh, 80 meter uh, front end filter. And below that you can see the uh, pre-selector capacitor with its own vernier. That takes care of the bottom of the receiver. I entered this uh, transceiver in the four days in May homebrew competition some years back and uh, took first place which we're very very proud of. So that's my homebrew version of the Drake 2B, 2BQ and the matching speaker.